Good morning, you guys. Real life, farm life, episode, whatever number this is. I pulled my back out yesterday, real bad. And I'm on my way out right now to milk my cow. And I got three strong men here. Maya and a couple of our friends are over, which is great. But my cow has been primarily handled by a woman her whole life. And she ain't about letting those men touch her udders. So I'm gonna go milk her. They're gonna help with how they can. This is farm life. Sometimes you gotta show up even when you don't quite feel like it. Hey, girl. Good morning, good morning. So a lot of people asked if I was gonna get a milking stool and I hadn't really planned on it because I'm pretty good at like holding a squatting position. <laughs> I was like, I don't know that I really need a milking stool. But then I was at Tractor Supply, I don't know, like a couple weeks ago, I'm anticipating my cow, I'm excited. And they have this little milking stool in like the decor area and it's definitely lightweight. Got that like, oh, hope. Girlfriend, she's like, get in here and milk me. Stop talking to the camera. I need, I will. Just give me one second, I need help. Anyway, I bought this on a whim. It was like 10 or $12, I think. I can't remember, it wasn't very much. It's pretty lightweight. It's probably meant to be like a plant stand. I mean, it's, it's heavy enough to hold me, but uh, I'm glad to have it today because with my back hurting, trying to hold a squat, I'm definitely glad to have this today. Let the calf out. Calf out. <laughs> oh, sweet girl. <laughs> I said, oh, my back. And she turned around and looked at my face. <laughs> oh, you could miss right. I want to cut this. Thanks, girl. Thanks for the milk. All right, y'all, so a gallon and a half of milk later, it's a few hours later in the day, I have been resting my back. And honestly, I feel like moving around makes it better than just sitting still and laying down. Last night when we got home, uh, we had an event at the kids' school. Maya went to put the calf up and he asked me if he wanted me to leave her in with Hope. One of the benefits of calf sharing is that if you are in a position that you absolutely can't milk, then you can leave the calf on. Now, you don't wanna do that repeatedly and doing that does kind of lower the supply. Like if you milk every morning, isolate the calf at night, milk every morning, and put the calf back with the cow during the day, you're just gonna get more milk consistently that way. Whereas if you skip days, when you come back and milk the next day, you know, there might be a tiny dip in supply, but you can bring it back up. And that is a benefit of calf sharing with a cow, of kid sharing with goats, because if something were to happen and you absolutely needed to skip a day, you could just leave the, the kids or the calf in. But last night was actually before my back started hurting really, really bad. I had a really, it was a rough night. I was in a lot of pain. Um, but I told him, no, go ahead and isolate the calf. I'm gonna just stick it out because we have made a lot of progress milking with Hope so far. Um, today, she stood still the entire time. Like, she wasn't steppy at all. She's getting a lot more comfortable with me. And I don't wanna miss a day. I don't wanna lose any progress. I would rather milk in pain <laughs> than not milk and lose progress. And you know, that's the kind of decisions you're faced with when you have animals like this. And if there wasn't a calf, if, Hope was used to being milked morning and evening without a calf there to have that kind of like fail safe. I would have had no choice. I would have had to milk her because you cannot skip um, or else you you risk your cow getting infections. What are y'all doing? I'm looking. You're playing a game? 
Oh, cool. Nice throw. We have lots of piles to play on, huh? Yep. One, two, three, four piles. So our friend Jason from Big Bear Homestead is down here today. They live over about an hour and a half from here in Georgia. And he and Maya were discussing this area down here where there's a bunch of old corral panels. And Maya told him that if he wanted to come out here and unentangle them from the, the brush and the overgrowth and clear them out, that he could have them. Um, and so they're down here doing that overgrown fencing off of it salvaging the panels that were left and the goal is is to get all of that metal out of this so we can then bush hog it down so we have the big pond here and right next to it there's an area that the man who used to have this property uh, dug out kind of a small pond but it's super green it's very stagnant and we had discussed trying to maybe get in here and dig it out more and making it more of a pond. But my dad came out here and we looked at it and what we decided we would rather do is backfill it. And instead of trying to dig it out to be more of a pond, to backfill it and give us more ground. Cause we have a four acre pond and then we have our little, the little pond, which is still a substantial size pond. It's probably like a half acre pond. We don't really need any more ponds. <clears throat> And this area where this stagnant little body of water is, um, there's only one small land bridge between this and our property line. And so that's the only way you can get from this side of the property over to where we're building like the shop and where our house is now, where our barn's gonna be. We decided by filling this in and giving us more surface space, that would be the best way for us to make this functional. But the first thing we have to do is get all this metal cleaned out and, and uh, get all this brush cut down. Some of the panels that are in here are just completely overgrown. So we're trying to get the brush down enough that we can get to these and clear them out. You know, a lot of the early parts of the development of this property, I wasn't here uh, because I was in Arkansas with our kids and our old farm. But there was a lot of this kind of, one moment please, there was a lot of this kind of like clearing out that had to be done when we first got here. Having this brushy area cleared out is going to make this look really different. One of the things that we want to do though is get this situated so we can kind of know what the drainage is going to be like here because our workshop is going to sit up here on this high point and I'm talking and I'm thinking I'd like to do some swales here and plant some of our fruit trees over in this area and getting this cleared out so we can see kind of what it's all going to look like and get an idea of it. That's kind of what I'm waiting on to finalize these plans. I had big plans when we first got here to just like hit the ground running and get fruit trees in, but I didn't want to just plant them anywhere. I made that mistake at my last house is I, I planted fruit trees because everybody says plant fruit trees first. And I planted a few right off the bat, but without really fully visualizing the long-term plan for that property it was just like okay this is the best space i have for them right now and it ended up being where we later kept goats and so they ended up killing those trees even though we had put fencing around them and all that stuff they were persistent to get to them and here i really want to get it established where it can stay and i want to do some swales i want to really 
maximize the water flow on our property to be able to grow these trees as sustainably as possible and th this is one of the steps in that so i'm excited that th that we're getting this done i'm not a whole lot of help to them right now in my current state but i want to take you guys around and give you a little bit of an update and i'm going to take mater <laughs> i'm not walking all around here right now big tarps down covering a future garden space but over here you'll see we finished the job that we started the other day I showed a video of us putting some of this down and we decided to run these with some space in between about 18 inches for walkways and we burned holes in these to go ahead and plant some cabbages and kale um, and some broccoli but these I need to get a smaller torch this black ground cover is different than those silage tarps because this is water permeable uh, but even still it is black and it is opaque so it is blocking from the sun and so right now this is doing a very similar job to what the silage tarps do by uh, killing out the weeds underneath now on the walkways here you can see there's kind of grass growing up but I'm gonna mulch them heavily with this straw I got oh I got some compost to be able to amend a little bit just in the hole where I'm planting um, my my starts my cabbages and stuff but I'm not gonna try to do any massive amendments here or broadcasting anything and the goal here is just to grow something this first winter that we're here um, South Carolina stays relatively mild through the winter so it was worth it was worth doing something now the window greenhouse will be right here in between these two silage tarps and that's not really on our schedule to be started until the beginning of next year we want to get that start get that done before seed starting time which will be like next february on this side where i went ahead and i'm planting in the ground uh, this will i'll continue building here and this will continue to be in ground gardens i'll expand it so it goes all the way to the road here uh, but this is just a start now on the other side of the window greenhouse is where we're going to build like our potage which will be like a raised bed garden um with some different in-ground things some different beautiful things as well as different food growing efforts so i'm not 100 percent sure how everything is going to shake out by spring but i know i'll definitely be growing stuff here over the winter and more in the spring somewhere somehow now i did have a couple of people ask me why are you not preparing this space with your animals with pigs and with chickens the reason why is because I wanted to plant it right away. And with pigs, if you're gonna put them on an area to prepare an area, you you want to wait a few months to plant it because their manure is still hot at that point. Hey, mamas. Hey, Doris. Hey, Clementine. We still have piglets coming at some point from Doris, but I'm not even gonna pretend to guess when they're close. No thanks. The other one strung us along way too long. Speaking of the other ones, look at them in there. Look at that little piglet pile. Hey, babies. Oh, they're all wiggling down, all warm in the in the straw. I'm not gonna wake them up. They're sleeping and happy. I always feel so bad when I go in and like wake the piglets up, and the mom has to come over and like lay down and nurse them. I'm like, oh, I just broke the mom code. Oh, I might have unintentionally done it. They're standing up looking at me. Hey little cuties. Hi. <laughs> there they are. Feed me mom. All five piglets are still alive and well. I had been a little bit concerned about that runt because sometimes a runt in a litter of piglets just doesn't thrive. But I think because this was a little bit of a smaller litter, um, that one is catching up. And she is, she's still just a touch smaller than the others, but she's definitely growing um, and I think before too long you probably won't even be able to tell that she was a runt So mangalitsas don't start getting their curly hair until they're two or three months old before then they just run around in those little striped suits 
they get it sooner if it's cooler outside so these babies probably get hair a little sooner it's not super cold but just being a little cool do it an interesting fact about piglets when you have a run basically the way piglets work with their ovulation is they're not releasing all those eggs at once therefore they, they release them in succession and so all of the babies are not fertilized and beginning to grow at the same time all of the eggs aren't and so when you have a runt and it's the same thing for dogs um if you got one that's a lot smaller it's just that's the youngest of them so it might be a couple days gestation younger than the other pigs and the main issue with a runt is not necessarily that it's weak or that it's um necessarily puny but if it is trying to eat when there's a bunch of other babies that are crowding it out and it's not getting to eat that's where you get issues with it it not growing because it's just like the youngest in the litter and so sometimes you have to take them and like supplement them a little bit or keep an eye on them and make sure they're getting in there eating but it is a benefit when you have a smaller litter nick if there had been 11 piglets and you have a runt in that situation a lot of times the runt won't make it because it just gets so bullied and crowded out that it doesn't get to grow okay y'all <laughs> I thought maybe laying down was making it worse. That's why I went out. And that definitely wasn't helping. So I'm going to show you one more thing I need to be out here for. And I figured I'd grab the camera and finish up this vlog. And then I'm taken to the bed because my back is hurting so bad. I need to find a chiropractor in South Carolina. I haven't had this happen in a long time. And I guess a couple months without chiropractic care. Not good. What are y'all doing? I'm going to put one here and run a hammock this way. And I'm going to put one over there and run a hammock that way. And then I'm going to run a hammock this way. <laughs> Yo! Hammock! Yes! And then we'll get a little bit of a hammock. Maya's telling the boys his plan with okay. these. Oh, what are those? Six oh, by sixes? That yeah. oh, he's going to post them here and put, oh, a, put a hammock like between the tree and the post. And then... <laughs> A hammock this way and that way so there will be a four and a square because the boys play out here in that one <laughs> with his baseball helmet and his gloves on <laughs> man you know baseball season doesn't start till spring right <laughs> he's been wearing that baseball helmet and gloves for days all right <laughs> Hope and Honey have been in this little corral here for almost a week now and we've been wanting to make sure that they were very familiarized with us, that they associated us with their dinner, uh, that Hope did, before letting them out on this pasture. Now, our eventual goal is to use electric fencing, rotate the pasture, and then also I'm planning on keeping her some in the night in the barn. Uh, we're going to have some stalls there because I'm trying to make compost. So I want to be able to gather manure. And that is our eventual plan. But for right now, we are just going to let them out in this pasture. Um, we have Bermuda Glock grass and fescue here. And right now, as it's cooling off, the Bermuda is going dormant. But the fescue is starting to grow. So this field should stay pretty green with grass throughout the winter. Not entirely, but some green there will be some grass and right now we're letting hope and honey out into the field for the first time uh, so they can graze this before they come up tonight and we'll separate them again so we can milk in the morning she'll do anything for food <laughs> she will follow that bucket to the end of the grass won't she look darling lots of green grass for you there we go Come on, honey girl. Come eat some grass. Come on, honey. Go get mama. Woo! They're frolicking. They're so happy to have so much space. Hey, pretty birds. Hey, pretty birds. <laughs> so our animals are all out here in this pasture together and Hope is used to being in a pasture with other cows and a horse where she hasn't hung out much with goats and alpacas but the thing is with cows is that they're pretty slow creatures and if uh, need be 
these other animals can get away from her. They'll get used to each other. We're gonna keep a close eye on it. We went ahead and did this today because we were gonna be here and Maya's outside. I, however, am gonna go get in bed because my back is really hurting. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you, until next time.